a show on the road. All right. Are we live yet? You still don't see anything? Huh. Huh. I see a bunch of people in the chat. Robin, we're live now. <laughs> Technology, huh? It's crazy stuff. All right, hang on. We're waiting for Ro Robin to come on. Got it. Nice. All right. So I just spent like two minutes talking to you guys, and uh, so I have to do it all over again. <laughs> <laughs> hope everybody enjoyed the whole day there was some fantastic stuff loved everything hope every, everybody that came from daryl's channel got to see him turn that awesome little hollow form it was a cool way to use up like little scraps and stuff too so great job um it was so nice to see everything did everything from wood turning to spoon carving and resin casting so it had a had a lot of fun. I sat through and watched watched them all and got to join in on the chat and everything. So it was super fun. Um, I uh, it, it talked about I was going to do some resin in the last one. So that's what we are going to do. We're going to finish this thing off, turn it a giant piece of a resin with something inside of it. Um, and then I'll talk about the negative rate cutters. That's what we're going to use on this as we're going along. And but big thank you to easy wood tools for putting this thing on and again in the chat and not in the description of this video because i had some technical problems and and uh everything got all screwed up but i will put a link in the description when we're all done but in the chat there'll be links to the raffle they're doing and um and then i'll put links to everybody else's channel who participated today in the description and they're already in the last one too but let's get started on this let me uh switch cameras real quick and i'll show you what's inside of this thing so my buddy jake thompson from northside custom crafts made one of these for al over in england al's hack shack but when he did he, he may had to make three of them because it there was air bubbles in it and it kept coming out in the thing so when we went and visited him in texas he had two of these things sitting in his shop that were all kind of they're kind of screwed up because they have air bubbles inside of them but it just still looks really cool so he gave me one of them i'm going to turn a sphere out of this it's wolverine and it has some aluminum stuff from Zach that he put in put inside of it, that aluminum honeycomb stuff honey, honeycomb stuff. So it is I measured it, I got it all figured out. It's actually six inches, so we can go six inches and not cut his head off. And we're just gonna take a little bit off the bottom when we round it over. So it should actually make a sphere. So this thing's been sitting in the in here for months and I didn't know what to do with it but I figured we're gonna do some resin turning so what better now than let it sit over there and wait uh, negative rake cutters <clears throat> so they're at an angle they have a negative rake on them which won't catch the resin it's before when I used to turn resin I used to have to hold my tool up at an angle and try and get it to create that negative rake but with these cutters from Easywood, it already has that rake on it. So I used to put tool underneath my armpit and hold it up at an angle, and it would still chip out on me. It would reduce it, but it would still chip out a lot. So it, the guys at Easywood came up with this cutter that has that negative rake. You can hold it right there. I've been using these for, I don't know, they're probably a year now since they came out with them, and they just work fantastic, just like the regular cutter. Hold it level right up against it and it won't chip out and works great for resin and super hard woods and acrylics and things like that so let's get this thing going so we can try and get it sanded so you can see inside of it before we uh before we get done and since we don't have anybody on after us we can actually run a little bit longer this time how is uh if this is the first time here robin is on the phone with me so she's going to field questions and pass them along to me. 
and <laughs> nice, nice. I know it was, it was just kind of, we're just kind of hanging out watching everybody's, everybody's streams. It was really nice, but yeah, good time. Good time. It was so cool to put this whole thing together and just kind of a variety of different things going on. Um, as far as, uh, the resin is a Lumalite. It's a Lumalite, uh, just clear resin. I don't know if it's the slow or fast set. Um, I'm assuming it's the Lumalite slow because it's such a huge cast. Um, it's, it's basically, let's see, it's six by, what was it? Yeah, it's six by seven and a quarter. So it's a huge, huge amount of resin. Um, as far as the aluminum in it, it will, it, not it's going to cut just nice and smooth you can turn aluminum with with you know carbide tools or regular gouges it's a soft metal and it turns very easy i've turned actually solid piece of pieces of aluminum before and it just comes off there in ribbons all right if you have any questions just throw them up in the chat and robin will relay them to me let's get started see what this thing's going to look like i'll start shaping the outsides of it a little bit um and then, then actually, let me measure it real quick. Just so I kind of have an idea of where, where I need to grab a pen real quick. So it was six. So we're going to come over here. And that is actually going to be center right there. And then that's going to be the top of it. And it is a little deceiving, too, when you're turning a piece of resin like this with something in it. It's kind of deceiving as to where, it, you know, because it looks like I'm going to be cutting into his head. But when you look down from, a, from the top, he's way in there. So. All right. So I'm just going to mark those two spots real quick. And then I'll just, I'll turn away these sides right here. And the lathe speed is, right now it's about, uh, oh, about 800. So it's a little out of round right now, but it will true up pretty quick. So it's, I'll switch cameras real quick so it can give you a better, better view too. Yeah, you just hold the tool just like you do with the regular cutter on it. Yeah, for a long time I was trying to hold it, hold it like this to try and get it to, to cut with the regular cutters, you know, flat cutters. Um, because I was at a show, I believe in Kansas City, and I was having a heck of a time with a piece of resin. And one of the guys from uh, the Wood Turning Magazine came by, and he was giving me some tips on how to do it. So he, he goes, "Try tipping it, you know, you know, at an angle, like trying a 30 degree angle or something, to get it." And it worked, but the problem is, it it worked like, you know. I don't know, 50% of the time, and then it would, it would catch. So it's still, even though it's, you got it at an angle trying to create that negative rake, it's still going to catch on you sometimes. And with these, they just, they just don't. So, and a lot of that right in there is aluminum. Turned it off, turned it off real quick so you can see it. It looks, it's gonna look really cool. We're gonna take away, take away quite a bit of that, but there will still be some on the bottom. Let's, uh, oh, nobody said anything. 
everybody's talking in the chat. All right, I'll just let's bring the camera right up here so you can actually see. All right. Could I define negative rake? Um, it, well, I, I don't know. I'm not a, not an engineer, but the cutter is, is the cutters are cut like this. And even if you did this with a, like it took a scraper and made it into a negative rake, it's the same thing. So you have an, a, uh, an angle this way or your bevel this way, and then the bevel down. So normally they're just flat. So if you took a, a regular scraper that has its bevel on the bottom, you can actually put a bevel on the top of it too, which is what they did with these. These are, I believe they're the same cutters as the regular ones. They just re-engineered them and put a, a bevel on the top of it too. And that eliminates that them from catching. Thank you, Todd. Thank you very much, sir. Richard, it's it's aluminum. It's always going to be aluminum. <laughs> oh, I just. Well, I uh, somebody. Jim said, how about a dome? Well, that's what Jake did, was a dome. So I was trying to do something just a little different than what Jake did. He made his into a dome, and I think he, he put a base on it, too, and then gave it to uh, um, uh, Al from Al's Hack Shack. Um, this is the number one hollower with a negative rake cutter on it. And the uh, resin is alumalite. So you can kind of see too when I get into I'm cutting where there's resin and aluminum, and it's not shavings. They're they're broken, and that's because the aluminum is breaking it. How about we do this? How about we just try and say aluminum as many times as we can in this in the next hour. <laughs> rugby rugby I don't know what you're talking about what is this rugby uh, the headstock is just a spur center I can bring you <laughs> light bulb shape I don't know I was just thinking a sphere because it was different from what Jake did. I didn't want to make the same shape from it. But you can see how clean it cuts. Lumalite is super how many times can you enter the raffle? That I don't know. Is there anybody out in the chat that can make a des uh, executive decision? Because it, it's not me. Thank you, Zach. That was a huge casting you did. That was insane.
it's like it's it's oh see there a decision was made one time per person sorry Thank you, sir. Okay, so what I was going to... So here's my whole plan. I was going to do the sphere with this. Turn it into a sphere. And... Uh, um, when, a couple months ago, we did the Cadbury egg and we were and we poured resin down on the table and used it as a stand. So I was going to turn this into a sphere and then pour some more resin on the table and mix aluminum shavings with it in. And um, use that for the stand. So it would be kind of, you know, melting aluminum out of the bottom of it. Uh, you can, it's, uh, you can use, oh, uh, somebody asked, you could use a full, full size detailer with a negative rake, Ronald, it's, uh, you can, it just takes off a lot of material, and I personally just like the smaller, the number one hollower, I just have more control over it, and just by pressing in or out on it you can take off a lot of material fast it doesn't I don't know it I just have more control over it and it's not gonna especially when you're doing like the inside of something it'll try and cut on the on the side and the bottom at the same time or something and it'll try and feed itself in if you're not careful so I just got comfortable using the the number one hollower so I pretty much do a lot of stuff I guess probably that you could do with with a bigger one but I would just rather take small little bites when I can and then if I want to take out larger ones I just will just press in a little bit harder so and it, like I was talking this morning about getting a clean cut, it's the same thing with, with resin. If you're just trying to take off material, you can uh, you can go a little faster just to get the material off of there. And then when you want to do like a finishing pass, you just come over and just go nice and slow. And you'll get a get a much cleaner cut than that. Uh, I I with resin I don't know I don't have a cutter or anything a, or a carbide cutter on a sphere jig, um, and I do have one but it won't do anything this big. It's for smaller stuff. Um, I, as far as being aggressive with the alumilite, I would be, be, uh, um, a, a little, uh, careful with it. I wouldn't try and, I'm not, I'm not pushing it in as hard as I would if this was a piece of wood. Like when I'm hollowing something out, I'm, I'm putting quite a bit of pressure on it. Um, this, I'm just taking light little cuts, but you can see. Can you see that I'm taking off the amount I'm taking off at a time? So I'm pushing on it, you know, pretty hard, but it's still only taking off an eighth of an inch or so at a time. And with wood, you could actually take a quarter inch at a time. Thank you, Jim. Thank you very much, sir. Appreciate that. Hope everybody has had a lot of fun today. And Got to see some cool stuff. So you can 
when I'm cutting it, I can tell when it when it's getting to that's the aluminum right there. You can you can hear it. You can see how the shavings change into these little pieces. Is Zach has probably turned way more resin than I have. Is he still in the chat? How do, how aggressive does he get with it? Because I I've always just kind of done it like this, where I take take light little passes. I don't ever like go crazy with it. I wonder. But these turned a lot more resin than I have. What's the most common mistake I see turners make? Um, I don't know if it's a mistake, but I I think it's more just um, when when people first start to turn, they're I guess you know kind of afraid of the lathe or nervous about around it, so they have a hard time. Just getting getting right up here, putting your hand up against the tool rest and turning. I see a lot of a lot of people holding the tool back here and kind of hesitant about it. And that's more dangerous if you if you come up to the you know tool rest like this with it in your hand than if you just come up here, relax, and put the tool right up against it. It's I I'm literally I I just have the my thumb on there to hold it down. I'm not putting any pressure on it. I could do this and just kind of as a safety thing I'm just kind of you know putting my thumb down on it. So <clears throat> I guess more than anything it's it's the hesitance you know a little bit of a fear that you know that uh, not that you shouldn't you know respect the tool and understand you know what it can do um, as far as safety goes but I just think it's it's being nervous about it is is going to get you hurt more than just being comfortable with it I guess Does it affect it in what way Braxton um does it oh does it dull it um um I don't I don't think it affects it I mean, it, it just kind of, I don't think it probably gets any duller than, you know, if you were just turning wood with one of the regular ones. Uh, how does the negative rake work on wood? It works great on, on hard wood. The harder, the better. Um, I wouldn't use it on, um, <clears throat> on like a, uh, you know, like a soft wood or anything. It's just, it, it doesn't, it's not going to cut as well. It's meant for, you know, hard materials. Um, but if it was a good hardwood, it, they work great too. Like if you're, if you're hollowing something out, even if it's not a super hardwood, they don't catch and grab as much as the regular cutters. So if you're trying to hollow something out, and you're having problems with the with the tool catching or or grabbing a little bit put a negative rake on it and it won't won't do that so you could even just take one of the little curve tools and put the negative rake they are interchangeable they go right on there you can put one of this on there and it'll be less aggressive for a tool like that too so if you're trying to get up around the lip of a 
hollow form or something, it would work, work great for that. Mm, I, I, oh, Braxton, I don't think it, I don't think it dulls it any faster. Uh, it's, as far as the shavings go, um, it's pretty much, pretty much trash. I think a lot of people have tried to recast shavings, like colored ones, and I need a drink of water. Um, a lot of people have tried to recast shavings in resin, and they just disappear. Even if they're um, colored shavings, because we did like the the uh, uh, that black the murder bowl we did with Peter. It, everybody's asking me to recast those, or even the the bowling balls. Even though they're a color, they're so thin that you put them in resin, and they just kind of disappear. So it is kind of, it's not really something you could do with them or nothing you can, can do with them. Yeah, it's as far as tool presentation, I think so too. And that's, it's kind of part of that being hesitant, you know. I mean, it's, it's uh, as far as, you know, grabbing the tool, you know, back here and coming up to the tool rest. I, I see a lot of people, you know, not put it down on the tool rest first, you know, or just try and come in like that. And you just kind of, I would come up, set it down, put my thumb on it and, and start going. Okay, Zach. Yeah, that's what I thought. I, I, I still get comments about you should cast the shavings on something we did, you know, three years ago. <laughs> so, but I, I can't remember who it was, but I saw somebody tried to recast them a couple of times or a couple people. And as far as making a sphere, there are some great jigs out there to, to do it. I think they all kind of just play around with them. I think Zach, Zach had one a couple months ago. I saw him do a video on on it. But the one I have is for, for smaller stuff, and it's just a regular flat cutter on it. show up pretty good. Richard, have you have you recast any with aluminum in it? Sorry, I can't help it.
Although he did, he did start it the other day or start it back up because he he put my name down on the invasion as aluminum. Yeah. It no, Robin just said I'm sure it was aluminium. No, it wasn't. It was, it was aluminum. love to we will get get around to it we were headed to Kentucky this year but all that got shut down so we were getting closer it does get really hot that thing is like on fire. I don't know any I don't know any aluminum songs. Cause I we need to get this done so I can start the drinking game. I could just go back and watch it and take a drink. Okay, I got to show you this. So, I get, Scott, I get that comment every time about the, let me switch cameras here real quick. I want to show you something. What? See this? This is it. All the aluminum and resin shavings are right here. It doesn't go anywhere. It's not, there's nothing anywhere else in the shop. Not on my bench over here. Everything just stays right around the lathe. So resin is much cleaner than, uh, than uh, turning wood. I turned the box this morning and it is... Uh, there's shavings all over the place and it was a little box the resin they actually it just all falls straight down it's much better i think it i think being mixed in with aluminum that really helps keep it all together too are they taking another drink <laughs> Oh, see, now it's the end of the day. Everybody's relaxed. Now they're going to start picking on me about the scroll saw. Hmm. Huh. If you guys, anybody just showed up, go to, uh, go to... There's a should be a link in the chat. Go enter enter to into the raffle at Easy Wood Tools. So it's good or it's open till midnight tonight Central Time, and they're giving away a bunch of tools and hats and T-shirts and stuff. Yes, the yeah, the class at Mark Adams has been it was canceled. It's so it hasn't been postponed. I don't know, maybe next year, but but yeah, it's been uh, was canceled. Yeah, we were going to be back there at the end of July. Uh, oh, Bruce, Bruce, it's a, it's a child's toy. Sorry. That's so mean.
It did work great for the chairs we did the other day. I, I only say that, not that I think it is a child's toy. I only, only say it to pick on Jamie. Thank you, man. All right, let's see what... I still have a little flat spot right there, but we're getting close. Yeah, I think we're going to be able to keep a little teeny bit right on his back. And... Yeah. Yeah, I think it'll be cool looking. I don't know. What else are you going to do with it? Wolverine. Oh, see now, now this one isn't coming for me. This is Robin. She said, you need to say aluminum. You haven't said it in a while. And she didn't do it to be mean. She just knows you guys are getting thirsty. Uh, yes, you can on a little, uh, like a credit card diamond stone. But it's not going to bring them back to factory, but it definitely, definitely will help. Make them last a little bit longer, but it, it, uh, yeah, I just, um, you put a little bit of oil down and it works great. And I know a lot of people that, that do that. We did, a, George, we did a demo we're at. PWT. Um, I'm trying to think. I don't know what PWT. Pacific uh, P. Oh, I can't, I can't think. All right, let's come over here and get rid of some of the other side. Um, so yeah, it's just kind of you know slowly whittling away, and it's so. If anybody has any questions, or, or now we're working on <clears throat> on the other side of it, the side without aluminum. There is virtually no aluminum down here. Yes, uh, we're the last demo of the day. Oh. Oh, wow. Well, that went quick. I think it was because we were screwing around. What lathe tools do I use and why? I use whatever tool works best for that job. Um, I... I go back and forth on on uh, almost all of the projects from that I'm doing. I'll grab a gouge. I'll grab uh, easy wood. It whatever is going to work best for that job. I don't don't just use one kind because they all have their have their purposes. Thank you. 
Oh, yes. Oh, so I did answer that question about sharpening the, the, uh, the cutters with like a diamond stone. You can't, can't sharpen the negative rake, just the, the flat ones. It's, it, I mean, unless you could figure out some way to make some sort of little jig that holds it at an angle like that. I mean, but yeah, you can't sharpen the negative rake up with a stone, just the flat ones. It makes us feel like we're loved, the thumbs up. That somebody likes what we're doing. The th thumbs up. Uh, this is the number one hollower. With a negative rake cutter on it. <clears throat> so, as far as the thumbs up, it, it doesn't really do a whole lot. It actually, it's... <coughs> to get like technical it's Google rates uh, everything by interaction so it's all it shows is that they, they don't go through and go this video has 20 likes on it we're gonna promote it more if if you had 10,000 dislikes and there were you know thousands and thousands of comments they would still promote it so all it is is show interaction and which is it doesn't matter whether it's good or bad it's just showing that, that people are interested in it and that's what they base their whole thing on is if people are interested in it they're going to promote it more Yeah, I talked to Heath the other day. We chatted on Messenger, and uh, he's doing good. Everything's good. He's just just hanging out and spending time with the family. And yeah, I know he hasn't hasn't done any videos in a while, but he's all good. All right, you know what I'm going to do? <laughs> Is I'm going to bring this around here. I know it's like... I just got... I literally covered in aluminum shavings. get this I think I got one teeny little spot right there you can barely feel it you you tell me in the chat when they're too drunk to type and then I'll stop then I'll stop saying aluminum some of them are already past that it's been a long day I'm just going to round this over here real quick. Do we all vary the comment? Oh, the content. Uh, 
No. 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 Oh, we, do we base our content on thumbs up or thumbs down? No, not at all. We always get thumbs down, and it's because we, we put, like, music in the videos, and some people don't like it, so we get thumbs down all the time. And I, when I was on the, did the interview with, with uh, Richard, I talked about that, too, because we enjoy it. We have to, you know, we're the ones editing the videos every week, and we're not going to change because somebody else wants something else it was we always you know take suggestions on like projects and stuff like that but as far as you know changing the way we do something if we're not having fun we're not gonna do something that's not fun just so we can get views or something I guess Because, I, I don't know, to be honest with you, it's, it's, um, just getting a bunch of views on a video doesn't really do anything, and it just has a bunch of people who aren't actually interested in wood turning. So, I, we would rather have people who are actually interested in it, and, you know, like wood turning, or you know, want to get into it, we'd rather have them watching than, you know, thousands of people who don't want to get into it, they're just watching it because YouTube put it up on their thing for some reason. Well, who, who said that? Oh, no, who... Harold, we are at that stage now. We're, we're going to sand and polish this part of it. And because it's going to take me a long time to do this. So we will just, I will give lots of detail. And I'll give lots of detail. And then I'm, I'm sure if Zach's still there, he can correct me. Because I'm not the sanding and polishing expert. But I'll show you what I do and how I do it. And but I need to get rid of that little ridge right there. And then we'll then we'll sand this. And then so you can see what it's gonna gonna look like. Oh sorry about that. The resin's messy. So it does, it's, when you turn in resin, it has some weird, I guess, not weird, it's plastic in it, because that's really what it is. Um, but it puts a film on your lathe, like it makes the tool rest stick and the, and the waves on the lathe, it makes those stick. So I always, when I'm done, dust it off and then hit it with WD-40, and it, it uh, can, what camera are we on? Can, can you see my leg? Look at that. It looks like I, I, a bonnable snowman. Oh, yes. Jake. Jake has a bunch of good videos up. All right. Let me. Right. And they, uh, yeah, they, everybody sands like, let me go grab some water real quick. Water. <laughs> All right. Do you want to tell them what I just did? <laughs> I didn't want to go in the house and get water, so I just dipped it out of the hot tub. 
<laughs> Is that wrong? So. Uh, yes, I will. It's, uh, hang on, let me clean that off real quick. I don't can, hang on one sec, let me blow the dust out of it. So, it's an easy wood tool. It's the number one hollower. Oh, there we go. It's the easy wood. Let me change the camera view. It's the easy wood number one hollower, and they have negative rake cutters on them. And they're meant for stuff like resin. We'll just sand up just a spot of it. So it's definitely, you know, a long process sand in it. And I correct me if I'm wrong, Zach, don't you you go through a grit grit and then on the next one you go like basically with the grain. I'm sorry, that you probably didn't understand what I meant. So I mean uh so when you you sand, you go around like this, and then you stop the lathe, and then you, you go with the aluminum. You you got to sand with the aluminum. Does that make more sense? So, and I know Zach does this. It, yes, you can cast resin if you don't have a pressure pot, but it will probably end up with a bunch of air bubbles. Um, but there are some resins out there that you can actually get um, fairly thick. You could never do anything like this with without a pressure pot. It's it's just it, it would just be full air bubbles. So the pressure pot is what what gets those shrinks those air bubbles down. Zach. Can you put Zach's channel up in the chat, baby? Because if you... Or I'm getting a lot of questions about resin stuff. And Zach is the man. He does lives all the time. It's what he does for a living. He knows exactly what to do, what not to do. So I would be... I would go check out his channel if you don't don't watch him. He he does lives all the time on it. So So I think this is pretty much what he does and runs through all the grits. Um what? Why are you laughing about? It oh it does. Well I'm gonna take that off, but it, we're running, Mike, we're running out of time, and I know it looks like a spittoon, but it's the Wolverine on a toilet, so what, it sh probably should be a spittoon, but we're running out of time, and it's, it's, uh, I need to get, start drinking, so. And is Zach still out there? Because I am curious, I, we talked about this when we went and visited him, but uh, maybe he can throw that up in the chat too, is like to where he uses a buffing wheel and everything with compounds on it. And I'm not, I'm not sure what compound. The only thing I've ever done is like just wax on a buffing wheel. I got some York grit. I do. I do have some, and yes, that works too. Um, and they have a resin one that works great. Um, and basically, I all I ever really do because I'm I've never really done anything this big that's clear where it has to be like a literally like glass. Normally, 
I sand, sand everything. I use the Yorkshire grit regular uh, after 240. And then I use the microfine stuff. And then I take a buffing wheel with wax on it and buff it. But it normally has color in it, so it's not as critical as something like this, where it it literally, if there's any scratches in this, you'll you'll see them immediately. Because it... thank you, Braxton. Thank you, sir. Am I putting enough elbow grease in it, Zach? See, yeah, that's, that's all. See, I don't have anything above 600. So, yeah, it's a different process he uses than I, what I'm going to do. Yeah, these just go in the, in the garbage. There's nothing you can do with them. Recycling. Baby, can you bring me some paper towels? There's only, there's only some in the house. <laughs> Thank you, Jamie. They're all, we only have some in the house, we're out. We only have that roll that's in the house, we're out. Yeah. We need to go to Costco, everybody. Ah. We're out of paper towels. Oh, Robin need, needs a drink, so I have to say aluminum. <laughs> yeah, so even how I do it, it's a long process. It's literally sanding. And so my dad had a polishing shop for years and he taught me a long time ago that you need to, when you're sanding, you need to like look inside of it. Because what you're looking for is, you're not looking, looking for the the scra all the scratches that are even you're looking for the ones you put on there be before because that's all you're really sanding off is you're not trying to get out all the scratches that are in there you're trying to get off any deep ones that look different from the, from the other ones because they're the ones that are still there from the grit before Thank you, Richard. Appreciate that, sir. Maybe we could turn the cocktail umbrellas. Oh, Robin was getting... Oh. Uh, yes, they're Velcro. I use... Um, 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 it's Abernet. I use their Velcro and they work fantastic. Oh, thank you, Christy. We had a blast. Hope everybody had fun and we will it probably a little later back there than it is here, but yeah, we'll We'll finish up here pretty quick, but if you haven't yet, go sign up for the tool giveaway. We got a bunch of different raffle prizes. It's all over there. And thank you for everybody that 
came and hang, hung out all day. It was a lot of fun. It was really cool just to, you know, see everybody doing stuff all day long. All right. Will they be doing another event? I don't know. They should, like, all the time. It's awesome. <laughs> I think they're a lot of fun. It's, uh, we have, uh, what's coming up? So the AW, yes. Nice, nice. They, uh, um, the AW show is coming up, so we're going to do uh, a demo during that. And... There's another one coming up in September with Wood Turners Worldwide is doing a virtual symposium. So it's really cool. I, I love, you know, the fact that so many people are getting into the, the live uh, demonstrations like this. I know the corona kind of forced everybody into it, but it really is. We've been doing club demonstrations and then and stuff like this too so it's it's really neat and it's kind of neat just you know, hang out with people from all over the place all over the world <laughs> what are we do we have anything going on i don't know what we have going on it would be awesome practical we'll set something up maybe we could set something up and do, do. thank you very much I had a blast today all right and as far as like I just kind of rinse it off in between in between grits and just take a quick look at it and like I said if you just make sure that all the scratches are even or they're that they're all the same and that's that's how you're gonna when I first start, that's how you're gonna get a nice finish on it and it doesn't matter whether it's wood or, or resin but when I first started out I would you know sand something and then I get up to like 320 and there would be a big deep scratch in it that I didn't get out from 100 grit or whatever and then I you, you, and you can't get it out with the 320 so you have to basically just start all over so it's better to stop for a second and look at everything and make sure it's all the same and then move on to the next grid. Great. Thank you, George. Yes. It's it's just so cool. It, you know, it was, uh, we were watching uh, Anne of All Trades this morning and it was so neat, you know, just see people from Sweden and Germany, you know, everybody was, telling tell them they're where they were from and it was it's really cool <laughs> thank you Jim <laughs> oh yeah it's I think I think it's amazing just being able to you know just be online like this where you can just hang out with everybody Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's they started doing doing you know virtual uh, club demos too because it's it's so much easier for especially for like, like small clubs and stuff where you know they can't afford to fly somebody in and and uh, you know have them come in. But this way they can you know bring anybody in they want from around the world and it's affordable and just really neat. Uh, SWAT, I, the last time I checked, it was on, but I think that I'm not 100% sure, but I think it, it, they haven't closed the, the venue down yet. And I think that's what they're just kind of waiting for them, but I don't know. It might, it might be on, but I'm not sure yet. <laughs> Harold is supposed to be a 
community thing. And I don't, aluminum. And and I don't I don't think it would be appropriate if I pour myself a Tom Collins. <laughs> I know he wants me to do all the work and <laughs> and not not reap the benefits. <laughs> We're all in this together, Harold. I, I need a drink too. <laughs> all right. Oh, thank you very much, Joe. Thank you. How are you guys all doing back there? We did a did a demo with with their club a while back. Uh -oh. oh, thank you, Chris. Yeah, that's awesome. That is so cool. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, definitely try and get something going again. Because it's, I think even after we all get back out there, this is nice. Oh, squat, squat is canceled. Yeah, the la I checked a week or so ago, and it was still going, so I wasn't wasn't sure. But yeah. Oh, the shiny aluminum stuff. That would be aluminum. <laughs> oh. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh yeah, I wasn't I wasn't sure. I thought they were going to cancel it, but I just somebody asked me, so I went on I went to the website to check it a couple of weeks ago and it, it said it was still going, but yeah. Yeah. It's too bad. I really like going to those things, but you know, you got to take care of everybody first. So, we'll do that and we can do things more things like this where we're at home. All right, that right there is 320. I'm going to stop there and we will we'll put some Yorkshire grit on this and polish up the aluminum. <laughs> oh. What else do they pick on me about? Oh, they pick on me about in inches and not being metric. That would be centimeters, yeah. Let's <laughs> you can only measure, measure aluminum in inches. It's a law. It's the law here. All right, let me get this out of the way. All right, let's try some Yorkshire grit. So, Richard, there uh, there is another one, the first, like the 10th or something of January, the AAW is doing one. Or not January, July. Jul Ow, aluminum. Um, ouch, that w actually was a piece of aluminum in my hand. Ow. <laughs> um, huh. Actually, that was probably aluminum, because aluminum doesn't hurt. Um. <laughs> it's it's going to be a spear. I'm just, I'm trying to rush so I can drink. Um, um, the AEW is having one in the first part of July, the 10th or something, and then Wood, uh, Wood Turner's Worldwide, I believe, Braxton, am I saying that right? I think that's what it's called. I'm pretty sure. Um, is doing one in Septem September, July 11th, all right. Um, but I think we should just all get together and do another one of 
too, on our own. Just do it whenever. Look at that. Everybody wants me to, you want to see this thing polished up. You know it's a Wolverine on a toilet, right? I mean, that that's the big reveal. So this is this is normally what I do, and obviously Zach Zach does it. It uh, goes a few more steps, but this is normally what I do. And you oh, cool. Very cool. Yeah, that was a massive. That was the biggest one you've done so far. That was crazy. So with this too, because because the aluminum is in it, that's what's turning it black. Normally, it wouldn't wouldn't have any black on it, but because of that, it's sanding that stuff away too. It creates kind of a mess. You've been here all day, what? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Bruce. Bruce, he's been drinking since this morning. <laughs> It looks like what? Simpsons. I, I don't know. Oh, well, the, oh, well, it was, that was really cool. Yeah, I think that's going to look awesome. It has the aluminum right here. It'll be going around the bottom of it. <laughs> oh oh all right <laughs> well so i'm gonna finish this because i love it i love it and it has i don't know if you could see it um it one of the air bubbles like shot out like straight from his head and i know i'll finish it and post some pictures on instagram but it's basically like a blade of air and it's going right through the middle of his head and when i saw it at jake's i thought it that just looks cool and so i'll get some pictures and get it polished up so what i normally do is basically just just that and then i will buff it on the on the buffing wheel to get it to shine up but it will all the little veins in there the aluminum will shine up it'll look look really cool <laughs> oh all right well i gotta get cleaned up i'm a mess all right let's uh let's bring you back over here Let's get, yes, let's, let's wrap this thing up. All right, I will, I'll get it finished. Um, uh, yes, we definitely need to do more of these. Um, maybe we could do, do one that was like a theme, you know, where everybody in it was, was turning the same thing, you know, like we were all doing our ta own take on, you know, like a vase or something. And I, I think it'd be cool just to get people from, you know, all over the place and do something like that, you know, where everybody could turn their own style of vase or goblets or something. I think it'd be cool to do more of these. Um, I just, uh, it's been a 
we we used to do lives like three times a week. We would do do a couple of them, but once we when we got the trailer, it was just like too much. We couldn't keep up with everything, so we stopped doing them. And with this all coming back, we start doing more of them, and it's just it's a lot of fun. It's fun hang, just hanging out with everybody. Um, I really enjoyed this. Again, big thank you to Easywood for putting the whole thing on, and go check out their website for their raffle if you haven't yet. Um, does anybody have any questions? Uh, you, Charles Wagner. Oh, somebody doesn't have Instagram. I'll put them up on Facebook too. Or, uh, you know what? I'll probably show it in the next video. I'll, uh, I'll just show it. I'll show them in the next, in the next video. Um, I'm going to finish the, the lidded box too. And, uh, um, I was actually going to do that and then I got, to watching everybody else and just hung out inside watching all the all the other people that were on today so i didn't even didn't touch it <laughs> when it finished it but i'll get both of them done i'll show them in the next video um my our instagram account is the woodshop tv and then if you go on facebook uh it's just carl jacobson and it's it's just public so it's not you don't have to send me a friend request or anything it's just all public and I seriously have a piece of aluminum in my hand now. Yeah. And I'm going to need a couple of drinks to get that out. <laughs> Ow, it is sharp. It's very dangerous. Um, anyway, um, I hope everybody had a good time. Uh, and yeah, it was just so cool to see, you know, all the different things people were doing today and, and uh, just fun stuff. Um, does anybody have any questions before we wrap this shindig up? I am filthy, too. Oh. All right, I'll wait for a second. I'll, I'll dig at my aluminum in the, my hand for a minute. All right. I think that's it. Robin's silence means it's time. Oh. She's trying to read. Hang on. She said they're going way too fast. So she's trying to put links and stuff in. So, all right. Would I ever wear gloves for for turning? No, this is uh that's extremely unsafe. Um you I don't know. I've seen people that turn with gloves on like one hand, like fingerless gloves and I mean it's I I w wouldn't put on a big pair of leather gloves and turn. Um it it's you know I I don't know the thing spinning around there. I don't know. I cut something up on the bandsaw the other day and I had gloves on and I always wear or not always but I wear gloves a lot of times when I'm using the pants on somebody said that was unsafe and I didn't know I don't know I was sitting down at the pants on somebody said something like I was like it was something you weren't supposed to do so I don't know I don't recommend wearing gloves on the lathe but because it is spinning and it could catch stuff um um so I would would stay away from that I I literally I just got in the habit of it. I don't wear long sleeves. I take my wedding ring off every time I turn. I just, because they could catch on, you know, corner of the chuck or, you know, some little or piece of wood that's, that you know, there's a crack or something in it. And something like a glove could get caught on something like that too. So I always, always just wear short sleeves, to take my ring off. I don't have any like jewelry hanging down or anything just to be safe. Oh, Chris, it is a giant piece of aluminum. It's literally huge. Although I can't see it. It feels huge when I rub my finger on it. It's huge aluminum. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, James, uh, the air bubble in the Wolverine. Um, 
So uh, it, it was in the figurine. The Let me switch back here real quick. So it was, there was, well, Jake figured it out. He, he, I mean, this is a ton of resin and he made two of them and they both bubbled out like that. And he finally figured out that it, the, his body is full of um, air. So what happened is that he put, he put it in a cast, put it in the pressure pot and it would push the air out of his body. So not this one, but the one he actually gave to, to Al, he, uh, um, he drilled, cut his back open and filled it in with something or to take all the air out of it. So you can't tell cause he's up against the toilet, but not this one. He could, he didn't know what it was. He just stuck it in there thinking there wasn't any air in it. And there was, so that's what it was. I don't need tweezers. I just like saying aluminum a lot for all my British mates and compadres. <laughs> only, that's it. That's the only reason I like saying it. I will get some tweezers and dig this giant piece of aluminum out when I'm done here, though. I... Uh, Jamie is probably keeping track or a, a tally of how many times I've said it. <laughs> all right, guys, I'm going to take off again. Thank you. Thanks for hanging out all day. We had a blast. Um, it was super fun and we will definitely put something together like this again. Um, every, with the response we got from everybody and it was so cool to see.